Hey guys, you're back with Arbit here. Um, as you can see here, I have a request. It's from uh, Yuri's Death, and it says, Thanks for the Gmod help, blah blah blah. If possible, like you show us how to make, say, a teleporter that jump to your location when you say code. Um, so, I think I'll give it a shot, and thank you, I am feeling better. Okay then, so let's get started. Um, well, the first thing you're going to want to do to make a teleporter of any sort is to spawn the hub drive controller. Now, I'm not really sure what you're talking about when you say to, um, when given a certain command. I can, I can sort of use my own intuition into thinking that you mean typing something into a text box, like say, well, teleport to me, and then it would, it would teleport to you, like it receives a command from a text box. But I don't think there's any kind of wire system that would do that, other than the wire text receiver. Although this is broken at the moment, I thought it was just my version of wire, so I went scouring the internet, and there, it, there's a problem with it. I don't know what it is, but hopefully they should be fixing that soon. So to work around this, you can do a number of things. Um, first thing you could do is a very simple uh, target finder, and obviously maximum range possible target players. Make sure you haven't uh, checked do not target over uh, owner. You could put in a name filter or an entity filter or so. I'm going to type in here Arbiter, just so it only targets me. And then we can see target acquired. Now then, Beacon Sensor, you can output um, World GPS. So that's easy that. And just wire this up. Uh, X to the world X, Y to the world Y, and Z to the world Z. And then, as for your code, there's not much... I can think, well, there is actually quite a lot, because I'm going to go, <laughs> go through it, but um, you could have a number pad input, is what I thought. You could do this, and so you can slap that on there, and then wire jump up to that, and then when you press enter, obviously it's going to teleport inside me, and in the floor, which is kind of crap. So, you know, you can put additions on the um, on the X and Y coordinates or the Z to make sure it teleports above you or below you, but this teleports to your destination more or less. Although, it is a bit, you know, use a number pad, uh, use keypad input, it's a bit crap. Alternatively, you could have a radio, just a single value radio, uh, secure, obviously, if you're only wanting this to teleport to you. Uh, and then, um, you could just say jump on given value 1 and in another place like wherever you're standing you could have the radio with a keypad maybe that uh, teleports to where you are so oh, invalid password I haven't typed a password in but you get you get the idea you wire one up let's say I use a button you know, it just this is gonna kill me there like I like, kinda like that and it just sort of teleports to you on given oh dear. <coughs> so you could use that for some kind of remote destination thing. Or alternatively, as I've just discovered, I can take you through something new. So we get rid of the radio and the target finder and the beacon sensor. And we're going to use something new, which is the uh if I can find it, because it always hides from me. No, it's up here. I just remembered. Uh, the laser pointer receiver and this is a handy little tool that goes hand in hand with something in the weapons section under other and that is the laser pointer as you can see it's just a little pistol -y thing and it shines a laser now what this does is it feeds the coordinates of whatever it is you're looking at now you have to link it up with the receiver and all you do is look at it with the gun in your hand and right click and you can see linked successfully so then um, as you can see if I was to spawn a, sc a screen which of course is still lopsided. The laser point receiver has outputs of X, Y, Z, active and position vectors and ranges and stuff. So if I was to say X, when I use the laser pointer, if I left click, it starts giving out X values. Well, it's giving out Y and Z, but obviously I'm only displaying the X. If I was to just change weapon, it still holds the value of what I was looking at. If I was to just turn it off, it should have reset a zero. Um, it hasn't. But that's irrelevant. So, I was thinking of a way, but all, oh, also, it also has an active component, which comes in useful, because you see that the laser is off now. If I was to turn it on, 
it has an active. If I turn it off, it's zero. And that's going to be the basis of what we're doing here. So, first of all, we need to wire up the X, Y, and Z. Uh, so, I'm also going to put in a arithmetic add to add onto the Z coordinates just so it spawns above where you're looking in case it goes into the floor or something. Um, so I have these three values. I, ha I have these three values and I explain what, what the output is. Basically 3, 30 and 2.5 and I'll explain what I'm going to do with those. So first of all X is output X, Y is output Y and Z, which I just skip past, is the add which is output Z plus 30. Okay. So, first of all, we're going to want something that actually makes it teleport, because obviously if, if we were to just say jump now, it would jump to wherever I was looking with the laser pointer. So, if I'm looking to say there, I would hope that the teleporter would jump to there. But obviously, I would need some input. You could use a number pad input, but I prefer the method of actually using the active function on the text receiver. So I'm going to use time delay. Oh, I this was on a tutorial I made but didn't actually post because it was bad. Right, the delay gate, um, it doesn't hold a value as such that I found. It simply, it it just accumulates a number of time. So if you say, if you set the delay function to 3, which I'm going to, it would hold a value, or it would not hold a value for 3 seconds, but it, it delays things for 3 seconds. I don't quite know how it works. All I know is that while it is delaying, for an input that isn't constant, so say I just had a button that wasn't toggleable and I pressed one, it would still, the time would still delay for um, a, a given amount of time. I'll show you what I mean because obviously I can't really explain it that well because I haven't quite wrapped my head around it. I use a greater than gate and as you can see when I look at it, it has outputs of out, time elapsed and remaining. So I say when time elapsed is I usually I say one is greater than one, but not in this case. I'm going to say jump on the greater than gate, and I'm going to say that when the time elapsed is greater than 2.5 to jump to the get to the destination, which means that if I were to wire the CLK up to active, when the laser pointer looks at oh there we go see, and then after three seconds it jumps. To where I'm looking at with the laser pointer. Now unfortunately, as you can see, even though I turn the laser on and off again, it still counts up. So if it obviously when it jumps, I'm, it, it doesn't start counting up again because it hasn't received an active value. But as soon as it receives an active value, it jumps. So what I'm going to do is, to cancel this out, I'm going to use the equal comparison. And I'm going to say that when active is equal to zero, if I don't set a value for B it's automatically zero, that the delay resets. And this stops it from jumping when you don't want it to. So now if I was to look, let, let's say I'm over here and I want it to spawn right in front of me. There, it's jumped. Now I've, now I've turned the laser pointer off and it's reset to zero, whereas before it would have probably jumped again because it had already started accumulating time and it would have jumped again. So I find that this is the best method of kind of having something teleport to you without... and you, you don't need to teleport somewhere else, you can say, oh, go over there or go over there and it'll just jump to wherever you're looking at with the laser pointer. And I find it's quite useful. Obviously you can play with the times. Uh, the 30 is quite a good value because you can see it's just hovering off the floor nicely, depending on what you've got underneath. the, the the hover drive of course. Um, but you can play with the values of 3 and 2.5. You, 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 you want to make the third value slightly less than the total delay because otherwise you might not it might not jump. So you just you know make the the first value on this constant value is the amount of time before you start firing before it teleports to where you want it to go. So obviously you can make that like one second or you know just like 10 I don't know but that's basically what it is. And the third value is just for the greater than gate to say that when this is about to reach maximum, to jump, and then it'll reset itself. And that's all that's happening. So there you go. Uh, I hope this has helped you out a little bit. And um, With any luck, the text receiver will get fixed soon, and we can see if there's another way of doing things. But as you can see, I've just there's just no there's, there's nothing there. So thank you for watching, and good, good see you next time.